Young Justice Outsiders debuted a week ago today, reintroducing fans to the show that was so cruelly cancelled back in 2013. Last week's debut, the first three episodes of this third season, both reintroduced us to the series and the characters several years on from the events of the second season, but it also introduced us to the overarching story arc of the season. First, we find out that the Justice League and the official Young Justice team have both been hampered by UN sanctions, thanks to UN Secretary General Lex Luthor, while metahuman trafficking runs rampant on on Earth, taking young, controlled metahumans from our planet into conflicts across the galaxy, most times against their will. This metahuman trafficking hits a flashpoint in the small country of Markovia, a kingdom whose own royal family has been torn apart both by the trafficking itself and the violence that comes with it. This week's slate of three episodes is a little bit different, though, especially than the first three. Rather than being a continuation of a single story arc as those first three episodes were, this time it settles into the newly established status quo and delivers us three semi-standalone episodes, the last of which does kind of return to the main story of the third season. In the first episode, Dick Grayson teams up with the Harpers, Roy, Jim, and Arsenal to help Jim and his private security company in, you know, a gig that only goes a little bit horribly wrong. Next, a Young Justice mission takes the team to the surface of New Genesis, where the team gains a new member. Forager, a member of the bug species living below Supertown that's exiled after the events of the episode. Finally, new metahuman Prince Breon goes rogue when a tip about his sister's whereabouts leads him to the home of Ra's al Ghul, prompting a little Young Justice rescue mission. And if the first three episodes felt a little too adult or more mature than you would have wanted from the original show, this slate brings you back to the fold. These three episodes specifically feel much more in line with the tone and themes of the original series, outside of some maybe not necessarily Cartoon Network friendly quips during the first episodes, and a particular scene during that final episode in which we see the League of Shadows dispatch a victim pretty ruthlessly. It was a nice change of pace for the humor to return, and in general, these episodes feel much more in line with those first two seasons than the first three episodes of this season. The mystery of the series continues to remain intriguing and really, really interesting, and while the episodes function largely as standalones, they do reveal intriguing pieces of their own, in their own way. In the new Genesis episode, we learn that controlled metahumans are being used in battles as far as that planet to subjugate Forager's people, while the League of Shadows episode gives us a new and interesting hint about Breon's sister, while raising more questions than answers, with a few intriguing story beats and easter eggs for the Bat family and Dick Grayson specifically. All in all, I'd give these three episodes an 8 out of 10 as a whole. While I do love the original Young Justice, I also felt like the first three episodes were kind of a natural evolution for the series. They updated the original material for a now much older original intended audience, and personally, I liked that. That's kind of the flexibility that having your show on a streaming service gives you. Still, it'll be interesting to see how the season progresses, as well as how we work back towards the villains of the first two seasons, The Light, and specifically that cliffhanger at the end of season two, which has not really really come up so far, uh, as we really don't know who all is behind the metahuman trafficking thing. All these characters assume that it's the light, but we haven't really confirmed that it is the light yet, and it kind of seems like they're leaving the door open for it to be a twist, and it not actually be the light after all. Plus, like I said, there's a major easter egg and a major, major cliffhanger and teaser at the end of episode 6 that'll be really interesting to see if, if they come back to that at some point later this season, or if that's something they just save for later. Let us know what you thought of the first three episodes in the comment section down below, but that's gonna do it for me here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, subscribe for more great content every single day, and consider turning on your notifications to be alerted every time we upload a new video. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.